We now have the welcome to this service of remembrance. First from Rachel Street, the Chief Executive of the Hospice, and from Father, from Father Jed, who is speaking on behalf of Father Francis, here from the Friars. Good afternoon. Welcome to this year's Light Up a Light service. It gives me so much pleasure to welcome you here to Aylesford Priory. I'd like to extend a special welcome to the Bishop of Rochester, the Right Reverend Don Dr. Jonathan Gibbs, and to Reverend Puth Ruth Pete, the Worshipful, the Mayor of Maidstone, Councillor Derek Mortimer, and the Mayoress, Sally Mortimer. And we had hoped to be joined today by Rosa Monckton, the daughter of our late patron, Marianne, Marianne Viscountess at Moncton of Benchley, but sadly she's unwell. I'd like to say thank you to Father Francis and the Carmelite community at Aylesford Priory for allowing us to use their beautiful venue. To all of our performers, the East Peckham Silver Band, the Maidstone Singers, Westmoreland Community Choir, and to John Cunningham, and to all of tonight's readers, and to Gallagher's, who sponsor us so generously each year for our Light Up A Life appeal. Our Light Up A Life appeal has so far raised £12,000, and many of you here tonight know personally the difference that our compassionate care makes, and I'd like to thank you all for your kind donations, because this will help us ensure that more local families benefit from our support. During tonight's service, your remembrance stars will be blessed to please do keep them to hand, and together we will say the names of those that we are remembering and celebrating. As a hospice family, we're remembering our beloved patron, Lady Monckton, who cared deeply about the hospice. On Christmas Day, it just won't be the same without her visiting patients and colleagues and volunteers and giving out her homemade mince pies. But we will treasure those special memories of her. And I hope that tonight's Light Up a Light service gives you a moment in this busy month to have time as individuals and as families to pause and to remember your loved ones. Our loved ones may no longer be with us, but we remember them in our hearts, in our thoughts and in our memories. And I hope that this time of reflection brings comfort to you all. Thank you for coming this afternoon. Good evening, everyone. And just on behalf of Father Francis, our prior, and the Carmelite community here at Aylesford, we really do welcome you to this Light Up the Life event on behalf of the, the Heart of Kent Hospice. It's a real joy for us to welcome you here. It's one of the highlights of our Advent journey even though we're only just in the second week of Advent today, it really is a hopeful time for us all. And it's a beautiful, it gives us a chance to really prepare for Christmas in a couple of weeks' time. And it, as certainly for the Carmelite community, this event is always the start of many other events that will happen over the next couple of weeks as we prepare to welcome the coming of our Saviour. So again, on behalf of the Carmelite community, it's so lovely to have you all here. I hope it's a wonderful evening as we remember our beloved dead. And please be assured of the prayers of the community here. Thank you. We're now going to sing once in Royal David City. Please, would you stand for the second verse onwards um, and join in.
please be seated. Meeting together in this place of ancient tranquility, where so many prayers have been offered, we remember our loved ones. We remember our friends and our family who are no longer with us on this earth. We remember their lives and the good they did in the world. We remember their faces, their smiles, their presence in our lives. Help us cope with grief and sorrow, with the pain of loss and the ache of emptiness. We remember the beauty and the joy they gave us in life. We hold their memory close since death. We speak of our loss and our love. May our words and prayers bring us comfort. May our sadness be consoled and our lives brightened by shining memories. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts help us journey through our grief and soothe us. We turn to you, God, in this time of reflection. Help us. Support us. Hear our voice. The first poem is read by Kerry Harrison, our patient services director at the hospice. And it reminds us that our lives continue to be illuminated by the memories of those whom we love. There are stars by Hannah Senesh. There are stars whose light reaches the earth only after they themselves have disintegrated and are no more. And there are people whose scintillating memory lights the world after they have passed from it. These lights, which shine in the darkest night, are those which illumine for us the path. You'll never walk alone. I saw that Father Jed was from Liverpool, actually. You'll never walk alone became the anthem of support for medical staff, for first responders, for those in quarantine during the COVID-19 pandemic. Please, as we sing it together, please stand. Please hold up your lighted candle or your phone torch or both for everyone to see. And please join in with our choirs.
Thank you. The lights from here look wonderful. Please keep them lit if you can. It's beautiful. We now come to our next reading. We're delighted to say that Reverend Ruth Pete, the minister of St. Peter and St. Paul's Church in Aylesford, who's a staunch supporter in our hospice to both patients and colleagues alike, um, is able to join us at this service and reading a piece about how our loved ones stay with us in our memories. Some words from Rabbi Sheila Shulman. Each person is a world. We recognize that each of us is not so much a person as a world, or rather the bearer in her or his self of a world. A unique, irreplaceable, populated world linked by a myriad threads to other such worlds. And when someone dies who has been a part of our life, there is a rent in the universe like a star vanishing. But like a star vanishing, that world leaves ineradicable traces in us as a star does in space. So that we mourn, but we remember, and we know that there will be a living trace of that person in our consciousness always. We now come to Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is going to be re read by Vince Connolly, who is the specialist social worker new to our hospice, or quite new to our hospice, and specialist social worker working with our care home team. And uh, that's a piece of work that the hospice does quite outside of the building and is really very important to our work. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green fields, God lets me lie leading me by quiet streams, restoring my soul, guiding me in paths of truth, for such is God's name. Through it I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shallow shadow of death, I fear no harm, for you are beside me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in front of my enemies. You soothe my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy see me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God forever.
Hospice care comes in many forms, and uh, one of the forms is that of welfare advice. We have a very small team of welfare advisors, and I'm delighted to say that one of them, Frank, who works as a volunteer with us, has been with us for, I think, three years, um, is also able to join us in this service. They um, are an extremely appreciated team, and they manage to help people at the most difficult times sometimes of life. Walking Together by Sylvia Rothschild. Life is a journey, but not one that we make alone. Family and friends walk some of the way with us, sharing days or years, helping us to make sense of the world, supporting us in low times, celebrating us with us in good times, catching us when we fall. Each of us contains worlds within ourselves. Each of us connects with the other worlds we meet in friends, colleagues, family. Our lives are made up of many threads caught up together in a bundle of our experiences and our hopes, but not only our own. For each of us, our personal bundle of life includes those that came before us and those that live on after us. So, when we grieve our beloved dead, we know that we have touched their lives and they have touched ours. And that touch continues to shape us and comfort us long after their physical end. Life is a journey and the days that lie in front of us will be different and filled with possibilities. We may start each new day without the physical presence of those we love, but they will continue to touch our lives and we will honour them best by taking them with us into the future. Now I'm delighted to say we have the address from Reverend, Right Reverend Dr Jonathan Gibbs, the, the newest the newest Bishop of Rochester, who's only been in post a couple of months, and we're really pleased that he's chosen to add us to his calendar this year. Sylvia, thank you very much indeed. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it, it must be evening. It's so dark already, isn't it? Even if on the clock it's still afternoon. It's very good. No, it's wonderful to be with you this evening, and it is a real pleasure 
and a privilege to be asked to speak at today's service to express my support for the work of the hospice and indeed for all of us gathered here this evening because all of us bring our own experience of loss tonight and our own memories of those we have lost down the years. We stand together, supporting one another in the midst of our grief and sometimes too, yes, our regrets. I share with you in those feelings. Looking back to the death of my mother to cancer, just before she could see our newborn son, and later to the death of my father after 10 years of increasingly severe dementia. In the midst of those experiences and of all the losses and tragedies down the years, two things have sustained me above all else. The first has been the love and support of family and friends, those who share our pain and walk with us through the valley of the shadow. That faithful, quiet, accompanying, that listening or the holding of a hand is one of the greatest gifts we can give to one another. The second thing, of course, is my faith and my experience of God walking with me, guiding and sustaining me through those darkest of times. Sometimes we're not even aware of that, especially when we are lost in the anger and despair that grief can bring. And it may only be later that we can recognize that we were being held in the arms of God. In the end, what makes the difference, what sustains us and keeps us going through the experience of grief and loss is hope. Hope that darkness will give way to light. Hope that there is life on the other side of death and grief. That's in part why we light candles. It's why we celebrate the light of life here in the dark on a winter's evening because we have hope and because we need hope. So thank you for being here today, especially if it was difficult for you to come and it has not been easy standing here. I pray each of us will find peace and hope through being here as we gather to support one another, as we gather also to give thanks for the wonderful work that the hospice does day by day and year by year. And whatever our own faith may or may not be, I pray too that we will find that the faith and hope of those around us may strengthen and encourage us today and in the days ahead. In the words of the psalm, though we walk through the valley of the shadow, we fear no harm, for you are beside us. So may God be with you, and may God enfold you in his love today and always. Amen. Thank you. We now come to the song that uh, was written. It's going to be performed also by, um, by John Cunningham. He wrote this song shortly after his father died to comfort his mother. His mother then died some years later. In, under our hospice care and John has dedicated this song to the hospice.
Bible. At first I couldn't see No one noticed me In the dark Set apart But in the light Please remember me But just especially Say my name Then once again I will be there In the waiting room with only God and you I had to choose between two heavens where to go And as I catch my breath I'd love no one else Nothing lasts forever, this I know And in the waiting room Somebody said to me that a memory can sometimes feel just like it's real if you close your eyes the waking moment comes and you are not alone when we were one can't be undone we'll meet again in the waiting room with only God and you I had to choose between two heavens where to go Unless I catch my breath I love no one else Nothing lasts forever, this I know And in the waiting room With only God and you I had to choose between two heavens where to go And as I catch my breath Well, I love no one else Nothing lasts forever, this I know But in the waiting room I had to let you go And in the waiting room I had to let you go Let you go Thank you. We remember with thanksgiving all whom we have named in our hearts today. Thank you for everything we remember and treasure about them, for all that they mean to us. Take care of them, God, until we all reach that time and place where every tear is dry, every question answered, and all things are made new. God, in your love, Hear our prayer. Source of all mercy and giver of all comfort, give hope to those who are sad. Console those who still miss someone special. Grant peace to those who are angry. Help us to cast every care onto you and guide us gently through the challenges and the opportunities of tomorrow. 
in thankfulness for the past. Help us to live our lives to the full in love and joy and peace. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for making us in your likeness with a spirit of concern and of love. Thank you for giving us one another to care for, child, parent, partner, friend or neighbour. Keep us sensitive to the needs of others and give us the grace to respond with patience and with generosity. God, in your love, hear our prayer. And if you would all please stand. And if you have a star, hold out the star. Also your light, if you can do together. And say aloud the names of the people that you are remembering at this service. It's important that we say it aloud. It's important that we hear our own voice. And we hear the voices of those around us walking alongside in the journey of grieving and of remembrance. I'd like to remember my mother and my father, Edgar and Esther. Please, I'm going to give you a moment to say your name aloud. Loving God, we dedicate these stars, symbols of our remembering and signs of our thanksgiving. They are tokens of our recognition. They are expressions of our love. We ask for your blessing on ourselves and on these stars, so that when we see them, we will know that those that we love are not so far away. Even if we cannot see them, their presence lights our lives. We speak the names of those we have loved. We call their names aloud. And as we hear the names and we see the stars, teach us to remember that love does not die and that death is not the end of the bond with those whom we love. Amen. Please be seated. We come now to a second biblical reading, and we're very grateful to have Derek Mortimer, the mayor of Maidstone, with us at this service. The hospice works very closely with Maidstone Borough Council, and it's lovely that you're able to come and do a reading at this time for us. The reading is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. A season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven. A time for giving birth and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for uprooting the planted. A time for destroying and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for weeping and a time for laughing. A time for wailing and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time for shunning embraces. A time for seeking and a time for losing. A time for keeping and a time for discarding. A time for ripping and a time for sewing. A time for silence and a time for speaking. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for war and a time for peace. What value then do workers gain from their toil? I have observed that which God gave us to consider. God brings everything to pass precisely at its time. 
God also puts eternity in our mind, but without ever guessing. For this to last, all things that God brings to pass. Ecclesiastes, the preacher, reminding us of the many varied experiences of our lives and that we cannot know, we cannot see the whole meaning of our existence, but that there is indeed that meaning. The last reading that we have was to be read by Rosa Monckton, who uh, the daughter of our, of our patron whom we miss greatly. I'm a very, we send her our best wishes. We hope that she'll be feeling better soon. It will be read, it, read instead by Anne-Marie Kelly, the Director of Income Generation at the Hospice, whose team have worked so hard with us today to create this event. Everything Falls Away by Parker J. Palmer. Sooner or later, everything falls away. You, the work you've done, your successes, large and small, your failures too. Those moments when you were light, alongside the times you became one with the night. The friends, the people you loved who loved you. Those who might have wished you ill, none of this is forever. All of it is soon to go or going or long gone. Everything falls away except the thread you followed, unknowing all along. The thread that strings together all you've been and done. The thread you didn't know you were tracking until toward the end. You see that the thread is what stays as everything else falls away. Follow that thread as far as you can and you'll find that it does not end but weaves into the unimaginable vastness of life. Your life was never the solo turn it, teem it seemed to be. It was always part of the great weave of nature and humanity, an immensity we come to know only as we follow our own small threads, to the place where they merge with the boundless whole. Each of our threads runs its course, then joins in life together, this magnificent tapestry, this masterpiece in which we live forever. Thank you. The Westmoreland Community Choir now are going to sing Love Shines Light. And you're invited to join in the chorus when you are directed. I don't know where Catherine's gone. Where is it? The oh, there, she's down there. So watch her carefully. She'll tell you when it's time to join in the chorus.
as this wonderful service draws to a close. May I invite you, if you are able, please to stand. To take once more your candle. A symbol of the light of our loved ones. A symbol also of the light of God's love for each one of us and for them. So may the words and prayers spoken today bring us comfort. May our sadness be consoled. And may our lives be brightened by the memories that shine within us. May God bless us and watch over us. May the face of God shine on us and be gracious to us. May the light of God's countenance shine upon us and give us peace. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about making you do the chorus all over again for Love Shines a Light, but I think it's probably a little too cold. Um, so just to say thank you very much to all of you, to all of our choirs, our performers, our band, our readers, and to everybody at Heart of Kent Hospice and all their little elves who were here very early setting out uh, chairs and everything else. A huge thank you and, um, and have a safe journey home. Bye-bye.